Hi, this is the Kevin Bass Show. In this podcast, I'm going to be discussing the latest new trends, investigations, discoveries, and controversies in the fields of health, health science, nutrition, fitness, and medicine. I am both endlessly overjoyed by the discovery of new knowledge and incredibly happy to share it with you, but also relentlessly critical of anything that is unlikely to pan out or unlikely to be true or useful. Through this dynamic interplay, I make this podcast one of the most intellectually exciting and vibrant among any in this space, both tremendously respected as well as reviled by other prominent health influencers and popular media icons. I draw upon my extensive network of scientists, influencers, thinkers, and thought leaders to bring to you a distilled version of what I believe is the proper take on the latest new ideas and trends in these fields. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Welcome to The Kevin Bass Show. A bit about my background and a disclaimer. I have uh, nearly 20 years either studying medical science or being in a laboratory conducting medical science. Nonetheless, I am only a MD-PhD student. I'm not yet a medical doctor. And even if I was, nothing that I'm discussing here would be medical advice, simply a interpretation of the medical literature by a person who reads voraciously and thinks incessantly about how to think about scientific problems and their practical application to health. Correspondingly, you should only take this as such, and always, if you have an idea that you take from this podcast that you want to apply to your own life, you should always talk to your doctor before doing so, and never construe anything you hear as medical advice. And with that, enjoy the Kevin Bass Show. I like being big and strong. I like lifting weights. I'm 220 pounds at six feet. My goal is to be 220, 230 pounds six feet and below 15% body fat. Right now I'm below 20%. I'm going to be, by the end of the year, about 230 pounds. By the middle of next year, about 250. And from there, I'm going to recomp at 250 for a couple years. My final weight being between 230 and 240 pounds, lower than 15% body fat. That's my final goal. I like being big and strong. I'm a jujitsu athlete. I'm a power athlete. It's fun. It's nice. I enjoy it a lot. But one thing that I know about my beliefs is that the things that I love, I'm going to want to believe that they're great. It's a human, a universal human bias to think that the things that one does are the best things. And so often, just as with diets, with lifestyle, anything that people do, they'll often want to believe and they will be inclined to believe that that thing is the best thing possible. They'll be inclined to believe only positive things about that thing that they love doing. So many people on the internet who love to lift weights will promote this idea that lifting weights is excellent for longevity. And it is. It's good for preventing sarcopenia. Sarcopenia can be something that's terrible and can dramatically impair quality of life later in life. It's lack of muscle mass and a loss of function, being unable to get up and carry out everyday daily tasks from having too too little muscle. And eventually you can get hip fractures and there's a downward spiral from there. Here's the problem though. Just because I want to believe doesn't make it true. Just because I want to believe that weightlifting is great for longevity doesn't make it actually the case that it's great for longevity. And let's now enter the latest study that was published on this topic in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, a prestigious journal in, of course, Britain, on this very topic. And it's called Muscle Strengthening Activities Are Associated with Lower Risk and Mortality in Major Non-Communicable Diseases, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Cohort Studies. Now, what does this study say? It says something very important. In this study, we see the very important figure below, or rather on your screen. As you get to about one hour of muscle strengthening, training, strength training, lifting weights, etc., you have the greatest reduction in risk of death at any given age. But as you increase to beyond three and four hours, your risk of death actually increases. 
the more muscle strengthening you do after a given point, after a certain point, the worse your outcomes are going to be, the worse your health is going to be. And, and what is this driven by? Well, we can see that for diabetes, diabetes risk keeps going down the more resistance training that you do, no matter what. Lower diabetes risk, the more resistant training you do. And this is because the muscle sucks up glucose from the blood, sucks up fatty acids from the blood and prevents you from having this energy overload because your muscles are a sponge for that energy. So the more strong, the more you use that energy in your muscles, the bigger your muscles are, the lower your diabetes risk. And then cancer, on the other hand, you get a reduction in cancer risk but not very much. And you don't get much of an increase as you get higher and higher in the amount of resistance training that you do. And yet cardiovascular disease is quite different. Cardiovascular disease is what's driving this increase in mortality at higher rates of resistance training. So the question is, is what is it about resistance training that causes heart disease risk to go up as you do more and more of it? I think body size plays a really big role here. The more jacked you are, the higher your body size, the greater your tendency to get higher blood pressure, higher triglycerides, higher LDL cholesterol, all risk factors for cardiovascular disease, higher insulin levels, higher levels of inflammation, all risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So the more jacked, the more time in the gym, the bigger your body size. In fact, it negates the benefits of, of resistance training, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Well, is there any other evidence to support this idea? In fact, there is. Now, again, I love resistance training. I love being a big guy, but I know that whenever I do all this resistance, resistance training and I get to be 230, 240 pounds of muscle, there are potential health risks and health costs to being that size. And I want to be well-informed and I want you too to be well-informed. So let's look at the rest of the evidence. Well, here's another study. This one is called health consequences of an elite sporting career, long-term detriment or long-term gain, a meta-analysis of 165,000 former athletes by Adam Runikers et al. And it says in the abstract, there is no survival benefit for male power athletes compared to the general population, but there were for endurance athletes. The same thing we're seeing in that previous study. Power athletes are guys who are big, have a lot of muscle, are explosive, depend on strength, weightlifters, discus throwers, wrestlers. Those are your power athletes. Whereas endurance training people, marathon runners, cross-country skiers, those people do have a important reduction in debt, risk of death. And why is this? Well, we can see in this figure in this paper, look at endurance sports, team sports, and power sports. You see that all-cause mortality for endurance sports is 0.65. That's a 35% reduction at any given age of, of risk of dying. So you're going to live longer. 0.68 for team sports by 32% reduction, but power sports, 1.04, a 4% increase in risk of death at any given age. Cardiovascular mortality is a 10% increase in cardiovascular mortality. Whereas for endurance sports, you actually get a 37% reduction. So what's the, the going on here? You actually do see an, a decrease in cancer risk, cancer mortality, but no, but an increase in, in cardiovascular mortality. Well, what's going on here is that an increase in cardiovascular disease risk, or at least not a reduction, a lack of reduction, the major cause of death, a lack of reduction in the major cause of death, cardiovascular disease, is not happening in these power athletes. Again, higher body sizes, higher body weights, higher blood pressures, higher substrate, energy substrate in the blood at any given time, higher insulin, higher inflammation, as opposed to endurance athletes who are going to have lower of all of those things, lower risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Power sports, being big and bulky and powerful, like I enjoy being, can actually be potentially detrimental to health. I want to check my own biases. You should be interested in checking yours as well. 
because by doing so, we'll be better informed about our health decisions. So let's look at another study. It's called Survival of the Fittest, published in the journal, British Medical Journal. Survival of the Fittest, retrospective cohort study of the longevity of Olympic medalists in the modern era. Let's look at a very important graph. Look at this graph here, classified by sports. You do see in this particular study for Olympic medalists, a small increase in survival compared to the general population. That's at 1.0, looking at the bottom graph here, 1.0. That is the average population's risk of dying. You see a small improvement in survival, but you see a much, much larger improvement in survival for people who do endurance sports, suggesting again, that at the same level of athleticism, the same level, at the same competitive level among medalists, Olympic medalists, there is a drastic reduction in the benefit of this exercise, suggesting that potentially while resistance training may prevent sarcopenia, it may prevent diabetes, it may even lower some cancer risk because of the lack of cardiovascular benefit, you're not reaping all of the benefits of exercise. In fact, you may be impairing or impeding some of those benefits through excess body size. Let's look at this study. Do elite athletes live longer? A systematic review of mortality and longevity in elite athletes and says considerable support was found for a superior longevity outcomes in elite athletes, particularly those in endurance and mixed sports, and they don't mention power sports for much the same reason. Let's look at one reason why that might be the case. And we look at this and see this in differences in life expectancy between Olympic high jumpers, discus throws, marathon, and 100 meter runners. Another paper published by Jeffrey Lee Heidenreich et al. In this paper, 2017, I'm going to tell you a sentence that pops out here and it's going to say, observed expected survival is highest for high jumpers and marathon runners and lowest for sprinters. In fact, you have a reduction in survival compared to the general population for sprinters compared to marathon runners and high jumpers. Why is this? If you, if you adjust for the impact of weight, you see that discus throwers here, discus throwers and 100 meter runners here have the highest mortality, the lowest survival, and about the same as the general population, maybe even a little bit lower. But if you adjust for body weight, the discus throwers do much better. It suggests that having a high body weight and not doing a lot of endurance training, both of those may contribute to the adverse impact of being a power athlete on longevity. That is to say, both not doing much endurance training, not running those marathons, not running long distances, and having excess body weight by being a big boy, both of those are driving this effect. Now we know from rodent studies very clearly, if you look at rodents as you run them on a treadmill for 15 minutes a week, you see an increase in lifespan. So we know the effect of endurance training is causal. The more endurance training you do, the better it appears. It appears that if you maintain your endurance training and your aerobic conditioning, you'll be much better off. And if you have excess body size, you're going to be much worse off, which goes back to the original study that we came to talk about in the British Journal of Sports Medicine published this year. You want to do some resistance training every week, maybe three 20 minute sessions or, or one hour a week. I would suggest maybe three 20 minute sessions, maybe a little bit longer if you like it up to two hours potentially, but that's cutting it a little bit close. But you don't want to get too big. You want to keep the muscles in good shape to prevent sarcopenia. And you want to do a lot of aerobic training, which is going to be good for your heart and maintain not such a large body size, but to be lean and mean. And the research overwhelmingly supports this conclusion. Such sports as wrestling, being a big boy in jujitsu, a super heavyweight, which is what I, I think I am already a super heavyweight. I'm going to be a super, super heavyweight. Being a big power lifter, a bodybuilder, it's not good for health. It's probably going to, it may shorten the lifespan. There's some signal in the literature and some reason for believing 
the adverse impact on the heart, or at least the lack of benefit from endurance training for people who do too much resistance training and not enough endurance training might be bad. The excess body size might be bad because of blood pressure and lipids. Be careful, keep training, but don't do too much and don't get too big is the conclusion. And if you look at long lived populations, for example, my ex-wife's family, they lived to be nine into their nineties, even hundreds. It's not because they're big and jacked. They're slight and small people. They're like below 150 pounds. They maintain fitness into that old age. They maintain activity and function, but they're not huge. No long lived people in the world gets there by being huge. Nobody. That's just not how it works. Yes, strength correlates with, with uh, longevity. Well, why? Because the same reason cholesterol does, the same reason also body weight does, the obesity paradox does. Because people who are older, who are maintaining their body weight, maintaining their strength, maintaining their vigor, maintaining their cholesterol levels are not sick. They're healthy, robust, vigorous people, but it's not because the strength is causing that to happen. Their health is causing their strength. Of course, you do want to maintain some physical functioning and doing some resistance training is good for you. It's shown very clearly in the literature, not just this study, but many studies. But there can be too much of a good thing. And too much of a good thing is going to make you live less long. Pursuing muscle at any cost, even naturally, for example, using bulking cycles, can be quite harmful to the heart. So people should think twice about this and about this narrative that if you want to live a long time, you need to look like a bodybuilder because that might actually be counterproductive. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Please check me out on patreon.com at Kevin and Bass, where you can donate and make this podcast possible. Also check me out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, where you can find my latest thoughts on the latest controversies and findings within health science. Also check me out at The Kevin Bass Show, both on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. I hope this podcast was useful to you. If it was, please leave me a five-star review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. See you guys in the next episode.